Tonight's message is simply entitled, Are You a, Rebe a Rebel? Or a Rebel? Rebel. Rebel. Are You a Rebel? 1 Samuel chapter 15, please. In your Bible, I'm going to read two verses. I'm going to ask you just to listen in to those two verses. You can remain seated. Are you a rebel? Amen. It's a question that is posed for Samuel 15. Uh, posed to you tonight. Is in what area in your life or areas in your life are you a rebel? And we talked a little bit about that. Mr. Price uh, said, said a quote, and uh, a quote that is famous. And I believe it was James Dean who said that. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about that after the scripture verse. 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 and 23 are my texts tonight. And it, said, and it says here in the Bible, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as, to, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, it is uh, behold to to obey is better better than to sacri better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Our gracious heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this portion of scripture. And I ask you, Lord, tonight to speak through me to these dear folks. In Jesus' name, amen. The biggest quote, probably the most famous quote in ever, not in the Bible, but I'm talking ever outside the Bible, is four words long on rebel. I mean, that quote is rebel without a cause. But I'm here to tell you every rebel has a cause. It, every rebel has a cause. It is usually to drag other people with them. You know, nobody likes to be alone. And if you were in this auditorium alone... For hours on end, you probably wouldn't like it. Nobody talked to you. I'm here to tell you, rebels don't also also do not like to be alone. They like to have a crowd. They like to have a following. But all of us, every one of us, at one point in time of our life, has had to deal with rebellion in one way or another. And again, the Bible says in verse 23, the first part, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. It has either been the rebellion of someone else or our own rebellion. <clears throat> I... That verse, rebellion is sin is witchcraft, has popped into my head, is not in my notes. When I was in school, there was somebody, there was a group of girls that played with every Friday night a Ouija board. Now, how many people know what a Ouija board is? How many people have ever played with a Ouija board? Uh, it's, it's scary. Um... I believe a lot of demonic possession happens when people fool around with the games of the devil. These girls, they used to they 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 used to play every Friday night for hours and hours and hours on end. They were not friendly people. They were what we would call dark people. They wore black and 
and they painted, they had wore black eyeshadow and jet black hair, uh, jet black fingernails, jet black clothing. They did not wear anything but jet, jet black lipstick. And it, they, they just were not friendly people. They had an aura of Satan with them. Just as that is sin, God here in this verse 23 says, Rebellion is as equal to as playing with Ouija board. That's scary. You, have, we have probably heard it said of a young person. His problem is that he listens to the wrong kind of music, or he runs with the wrong crowd. Uh, uh, neither one of these are good influences and neither are recommended for a closer walk with the Lord. The truth is, rebellion is nothing outward. Rebellion is grown inwardly and manifested outwardly. Rebellion is not in the clothes, rebellion is in the heart. You know, we go to. I was at Walmart uh, with my wife and kids yesterday, and there's this kid screeching. Now, I don't like that. That's rebellion. He was screeching. <laughs> but God does not like rebellion. Just as that little child rebelled in Walmart. Mom says, you wait till I get you home. That child was going to get it. Get it. God deals with rebellion. God deals with rebellion. Again, rebellion is manifested inwardly, or sorry, is grown inwardly and manifested outwardly. There's a story of about a little boy who was instructed by his teacher to sit down and be quiet. But because of his rebellious nature, he did not want to, to do this, but was forced to do this by his teacher. Later, the boy in the uh, sorry, the child in the class, or the boy in the class, uh, 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 in the class, were chiding with him, saying, "Boy, you better, you really sat down and shut up when the teacher uh, approached you with the paddle." The rebellious boy replied, I may have been sitting down on the outside, but I was standing up on the inside. This is a true picture of rebellion. Often Christians, they, they uh, uh, um, on the outward, they, they, they serve the Lord. But on the inside, they're not serving God. On the inside, they're not serving God at all. They're going through the motions. Again, I heard a preacher who's no longer in the ministry said, fake it until you mean it. You don't want to serve God, fake it until you mean it. God's not interested in that. God is interested in the heart being right first. And the Bible says, uh, you know, the outward appearance is uh, beautiful, and I'm paraphrasing it, but the inside is full of dead man's bones. Let God clean the inside of the cup first, inside your heart first, and everything else outside will come and fit together. When I was in Chicago at, how, uh, at Bible College, there was this kid, she got saved, young girl, she got saved, and when she got saved, when I led her to the Lord, she had a piercing here, a piercing in each nose, a piercing in the there, a piercing in the lips, piercing over here, piercing up here, and she had them all, and in her tongue, she had them all, in, including her tongue, uh, um, uh, attached together by a chain. Well, she, she told her friends, she invited her friends the next day. It was, she got saved on a Saturday, Sunday morning. Her friends knocked on her door and said, Hey, where are you going? She said, I'm going to church. Why don't you come? They, they unprovoked, grabbed all the chains out of her face and ripped them out. She, had, she was bleeding and bleeding and her tongue was bleeding. And I knocked on her door and she was all bandied up and I said... What happened? And she told me, I said, you better go to the hospital. She said, no, I don't want to rebel. I want to go to church. 
I, I want to be in church. And you know what? That young girl, that young girl, the last time I heard, she was serving the Lord still when an inner city kid, Chicago kid, to the Lord because she made a decision that morning not to rebel. Today I want to answer five questions on rebellion. And again, I believe that every one of us at one point in time have probably struggled with rebellion in our own lives. Every one of us. First of all, the first question I want to answer is what is rebellion? What truly is rebellion? It comes from two words, which means uh, the re, which means again, and bell, which means to wage war. We wage, when we rebel, we are not waging war, we're not, we're not, eh. let me say this. When we rebel, we are waging war against God Almighty. Did you ever, did your mom ever say clean your room and you got all, all, all your knickers in a knot? I take that laughter as a yes. That's a sign of rebellion. How many kids ever did that? Raise your hand. Amen. All kids, you need to raise your hand. But you know what? She, she did not rebel against, just against mama because the Bible says children obey your parents. She also, and we've done it too, every one of us has done it, went, rebelled and raged war against God Almighty. The, to rebel means to make war against one who, with whom uh, you've made perfect peace. This is one reason the Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Look up here, folks. You see, Satan, listen to me, Satan is the enemy. He is the enemy. And he is God's biggest enemy. And he wants you to be his buddy. Friend, buddy, friend, confidant, soldier. He couldn't stop you from getting saved, but he can stop you from serving the Lord. He can entice you by the right things, so to speak. Witchcraft, like Satanism, is the is is the an enemy of God. Satan rages war with God and in and is in and 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 never gives up. You know, I read a book when I first got saved. This present darkness. How many people have ever read that book? That book. It's in our church library. That book talks about the spiritual war that's going on around us that we don't see. We forget about it. You know, we saw when uh, the war in Iraq, the, the on the news every night, and the war in Afghanistan, we, we saw that. We saw the news reports. You know, we saw the men hiding behind, the men and women, brave men and women, hiding behind the, the walls and shooting back. And, and uh, you know, you could watch on videos where they're you know, on YouTube probably they're all there, uh, you know them shooting back and trucks getting blown up and 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 buildings getting bombed and and that. But we we there's a war going on around us. And by the way, there's a war going on around this auditorium tonight that we don't see. To be rebellious is to wage war against the one, capital zero, capital O, with whom you have made peace. 
To rebel against God is to wage war against God. I don't know about you, but God is more powerful than me. It'd be like facing the whole 52nd Armored Division with a squirt gun. Come on and get me. They're going to get you. I have seen people say, God, I'm mad at you. I'm fighting against you. And I've also seen them die. I saw an elderly man at the hospital one time. I went to visit him. And he said, God, I hate you. And you go to hell, God. You what? He told God to go to hell. What did he say? God killed him. He died within minutes later. You know, God is nothing to be smirked at. You know, we shouldn't wave our finger or wave our fist at God. Because <laughs> you're going to lose. In other words, this wage war or to rebel means basically same is the same basically the same meaning as duel. It's a dual battle between two people. Ultimately there's one winner and one loser, one survivor and one person dead. Do you remember those I like old Western movies? Gunsmoke. How many people have dust guns Gunsmoke is my one of my favorite. And you know, uh, there are these all these Western movies where one guy, one cowboy stands with his back to the other cowboy and okay, ten paces, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, and and they shoot, and one, usually one person dies. Okay, and it's usually the one that's the slower draw, or that can't shoot straight, or the one that can't count. One who's been drinking. Number one, God is always sober. Number two, He can count straight. He is a faster draw than you and I. And he has a better shot. So when we get to do it with God, who do you think always wins? Hello? Again, would you want to go up against the 52nd Armored Division, a bunch of tanks, hundreds of tanks, with a squirt gun? You know, when I was in the Army, they always told us, don't ever shoot at a tank straight on. You'll chip the paint and take them off. Don't ever shoot God straight up. Don't ever shoot at God, period. Because God is always, always more powerful than you. Number two, how do we become rebellious? Our source of trust changes. That's it. Our source of trust changes and we rage war between God and us. You know, the Bible does not say trust in everything else but God with all thine heart and lead to your own, lean, lean to your own, not under the, God's understanding in all thy ways, ignore Him and He, and you, you'll direct your own paths. It says, what does it say? It all talks about God, that we need to trust in the Lord and uh, lean under His own understanding and all the ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 36 verse 5 says, I say, sayest thou, but they are but vain words, but I have counsel and strength for war. Now on, whom dost thou trust? That thou rebellest against me. Here is a solemn warning against the wrong trust. What is your first name again? Joanne. 
and I'm going to say this because I know you're not going to get offended by it, but compared to God, I don't trust you. And compared to God, you shouldn't trust me. Now, you should trust your preacher, but compared to God, it should be night and day. We need to stake a claim of who we should trust. You weren't offended by that, were you? You understand where I was going on that. Now, it's like that chair that you're sitting on or the pew you're sitting on. You trust that to hold you up. I remember a pastor friend of mine, Sam Abraham, big boy. We we were poor. This is a sidebar. This is extra. We were, my wife and I, we were so poor. We did we did not have we we did not have wooden furniture. Our dining room table was a picnic table uh, a plastic table and our chairs were plastic and Sam Abraham was Pastor Abraham was 300 plus pounds and he sat in in our table uh, came over to the house and we were having a, a Bible study and after the end of the Bible study we were having cook uh, um, uh, coffee cake and, and coffee and that because you know we we're Baptists and uh, it's just what Baptists do eat and uh, the chair the legs of the chairs decided to slide apart he's like oh Lord I'm going Lord, I'm coming. And uh, uh, but you know what? As those, those chair, those legs, if they were God, they would not buckle. God never buckles under pressure. You know, He's got a really good day planner. God has got a really good day planner. He makes it every day, especially for each and every one of us, whether saved or not saved. He makes a day special. You know, rebellion can be taught. You know, I see, a, I see kids every day. See, I, I see hundreds of kids every day. And as young adults and adults. Parents are teaching their kids to rebel. You know, well, if I don't like my contract, I'm striking. That's rebellion. Simple as that. If you signed a contract, you better honor it. I signed a contract for this church. You know I'm under contract? I am under contract as the pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church. And I better honor that contract. It's sad. Jeremiah chapter 28 verse 16 it says therefore thus saith the Lord uh, behold I will cast thee from off thy face of the earth this year thou shalt die because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord did God does that sound God was wishy-washy about that she's going to destroy the person that year how about Jeremiah 29, verse 32? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will punish uh, uh, Shimeon and uh, Nehemite and his, and his seed. He shall not have a man to dwell among his people, neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, saith the Lord, because he hath taught rebellion against the Lord. We become rebellious by... Our source of trust changing. Number three, what are some symptoms associated with rebellion or with a, re with a rebel? How can we pinpoint a rebel? You know, I I'm tired of everybody saying, well, you shouldn't judge people, you shouldn't judge people, you shouldn't judge people. And I agree with that to a certain extent. You better pick your friends wisely. Amen? Growing up, I didn't pick my friends. Uh, well, growing up in elementary school, I pick, in high school, I picked my friends very wise. I had good friends. And some of my friends I'm still friends with even to this day. But after that, I did not pick my friends very wisely. I picked the guys that I worked with, I picked the guys that I served alongside in the military. And some of these people had these traits. Some of them didn't, some of them did. We need to pick and when we pick and choose who we hang out with, we need to look at these these um, traits 
and decide whether they have them or not. First trait I want to talk about is that the person's disobedient. First Samuel twelve verse fifteen it says, "But if uh, but if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and uh, sorry, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers." Nehemiah chapter. By the way, if he's against the person that's rebellious and you're friends with them, oftentimes you get you get dragged into it. You are who you hang out with. Nehemiah 9.26 says, Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee, and cast thy law behind their backs, and slew the prophets which testified against them to turn them to thee, and they were wrought great provocations. Not only are they, are they, are, are they disobedient, they're actually unreasonable. The word unreasonable simply means they're without reason. They're without common sense. If I was to give you a bottle of poison, would you drink it? Why? Because she has some common sense. But God is not all, or sorry, Satan is not always that um, obvious. Hey, let me see. If Satan came up to you with a horns and a tail and a pitchfork and in a red uh, red suit, smelling like sulfur, with a forked tongue going, blah, 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 you would walk away from him. But he does not. By the way, he is. The Bible talks to him about being a beautiful creature. He was the most beautiful angel. He does not appear with red, a pitchfork, red tongue, smelling like uh, uh, horns and red tongue and red suit and tail and smelling like sulfur. He does not. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 to 20 says, Come now, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Hmm. God says, hey, let us think together. Let's sit down and think together. You ever done that? Sit down and think together, think with God? If somebody's smarter than you, what do you do with, when they talk? Listen. I always wonder why when we pray, when the majority of Christians pray, that they're always talking. God, I would like this, this, I was like 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 this. In Jesus' name, amen. See ya! Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just saying that's what Christians do. They pray, they talk to God, and they just don't say, okay, God, now speak to me. Now, God will not audibly say, you must do this. If you're hearing that, check your Kool Aid. But it's that small... St you ever, you ever heard, felt that small, still voice in your heart? You know what that is? That's God reasoning with you. Hey, you probably shouldn't do that. Hmm. Let me continue on that in Isaiah. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Through, uh, though your sins be scarlet, they shall be white as snow. I like that. Woohoo! Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat of the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Folks, if God, God tell you know, there's a, there's a, uh, and I, I'm going to make a statement, and you may not agree with me, but I'm the preacher, so you have to listen for a minute. There is a very bad teaching going on out there that says if God, if your church is not running a couple hundred, God must not love you, or you must have rebellion, 
or if your your bank account's not four or five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, ten thousand dollars, you're either you must have some rebellion. Or I heard this: if you get a pimple, you it's God's rebellion coming. That is stupid teaching. Nowhere is it found in the Bible. But God says, if you're obedient to him, he, folks, I, I believe this, this verse is talking about the fact that you will, the, 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 the blessings of God, of you reading your Bible and something coming up and going, <clears throat> hitting you in the head, and you're like, wow, that's cool. For one year, I have been, I was struggling with something. Nobody knew except God and me. And I had read this passage probably five or six times in my Bible reading, probably and probably a whole bunch more other times. And I read this passage, and after a year, it was it hit me. Now I didn't wasn't I don't believe I was rebelling in that area. I just believe God just poured it, just let me see that blessing to help me at that time. We need to we need to let God do that. Quit rebelling. Quit being unreasonable. Quit trying. Okay. Magic tricks. You ever try to figure out how they do it? You ever wonder how they do a magic trick? How they saw somebody in half? By the way, it's you're in a box and there's somebody else there. But why are we trying to figure out God? And why He does things? Well, that person's so mean, and you bless them. But God says He puts the He sends the sun and the rain on the on the just and the unjust. Folks, listen to me. God blessing you financially does not necessarily mean you're doing right. There's a man who man who 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 did. I, I knew I knew he was in sin. Knew he was in sin, deep sin, and God blessed him with some money. You know why he blessed him with the money? Because he didn't tithe. He had the extra money. And you know why? You know what? He, he, he thumbed his nose at God and said, you know what? You're blessing me, God, because I got extra money. We need to quit telling God what he thinks. Amen? Well, the next characteristic is that the person departs from the Bible. Daniel chapter 9, verse 5. says, We have sinned and committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the priest of thy precepts and from thy judgments. Listen to me, folks. If it's somebody who does not do what the Bible says, maybe they were on fire for God. Maybe they were preaching the gospel. Maybe they were doing things for the Lord. Maybe they were soul winning. And they stop doing it. Those are the people you need to watch. You need to pray for them, but you need to watch. Because again, rebellion, rebels always like to have company. Again, rebel without a cause. That's a false statement. They always have causes, always to bring people with them. Next thing is that they do evil. Or that which is destructive. Proverbs 17 verse 11 says, An evil man seeking, uh, seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. They're also stubborn and out of control. Deuteronomy 21 verse 18 to 20. Just write that down. I'm running out of time. It says, Stubborn and rebellious, he will only uh, see, he will not. Uh, he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. They're also perverse, bent toward the wrong and away from the right. First Samuel twenty verse thirty. They always want to go do what's wrong. They don't want to do what's ever do what's right. Is going to church right? Is loving your enemy right? Is 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 uh, is taking care of your family right? Is neglecting? We see it here. Neglecting your mom and dad. Not 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 here as in 
here, but neglecting mom and dad. Is that right? No. Oftentimes, we, we, we see the people wanting to do the wrong instead of the right. The rebellion. The rebellious. They also have a revolting heart. The resistant and headstrong to anything that God says, Jeremiah 5.23. And they also have misplaced trust. They trust in this. Do you know, Y'all got, well, some of you just have credit cards. There is a clause that your credit card company at any point in time can cut your credit card off. So, Christmas time, Christmas is coming up. What do most parents do? They put it, yeah, hold here. They put every gift on this. And then they say what? We'll trust that it comes in, the money that comes in later. But it, sometimes it doesn't come. You go and you buy your kid the most, the gift that they want, and you go to put it in, and they, the, 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 the cat teller says, Sorry, sir or ma'am, this is no good. I used to work in retail where I've had to cut people's cards. At that time, they literally took a pair of scissors and they literally cut your card and gave you two pieces. Had to do that. I don't know if they do that now. Lord willing, I'll never find out. But, you know, the United States, their money says, in God we trust. They want to take that off. President Obama wants to take that off. Who are they trusting in? I am not trusting in Prime Minister Harper, albeit I think he's a good guy and he's taken our country in a good way. I'm trusting in God. I'm not trusting in you or me, uh, you or anybody else to, to get me through the day. We need, uh, we need to trust God. Number four, why is rebellion dangerous? i gotta, I got to quickly go. Uh, rebellion is dangerous. It says, verse uh, Isaiah 30, verse 1 says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, not, but not of me, and that covered with a covering, but, my, but not by my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. It is literally a threat to God. Rebellion is a threat. This verse is a threat from God to you. Rebellion is threatening God's power. And God goes, you don't have any strength. Sorry. A little bug. That's what we are to God when we rebel. Again, 1 Samuel chapter uh, uh, 15, verse 23a says, For rebellion is a sin as witchcraft. I want to follow some verses quickly. Job 34, verse 37, for, for he added rebellion to his sin. And then turn to, uh, then look at Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death. I think we all can agree that death is pretty bad. Amen? But also spiritual death, spiritual separation from God in a place called hell is really, really bad. Number five, this is the last. How do you determine, or sorry, how do you deal with rebellion? Determine who you will love. Mark 12, 30. It says that we should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. You do not need to re you do not rebel against the one you love. You don't. You want to do everything in your power to serve them and to, to make sure that every need that they have is taken care of. Well, the second thing we need to do is we need to decide in whom we will trust. First Kings eighteen twenty one says, How long halt thou halt ye between two options? If the Lord be God, follow him. If but if Baal, then follow him. Folks, listen to me. 
I've seen it time and time again. I've read the end of the book. God is God. He is. So who are we going to... We must whom we, we must decide which camp we're going to be in. God's or Satan's. Simple as that. You do not war against the one you trust, the Lord. And the third thing we must do, how we deal with it, we call it what it is. John 1.19 plainly states that if we confess our sins... Sorry, 1 John 1.19 says... If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need to quit giving dozens of excuses why it's obeyed, why it's okay to be a rebellious Christian. Billy Sunday said that an excuse is simply the skin of a reason stuffed, stuffed with lies. Let's say that again. The skin of a reason is stuffed with lies. Well, I didn't go to church today because of this. I didn't feel well. I don't feel well when I'm here. Well, you get paid to be here. Not enough for me to... to <laughs> I know I'm saying I don't get paid enough, but you know what? I, I could miss a Sunday and, and I give the money back and it probably wouldn't touch or hurt much. I'm here because this is where God wants me to be. I don't want to rebel. Recognizing rebellion will help us to determine and accept the will of God for our lives. If you are at war with the Lord, you will not want to nor accept His will in any areas of your life. We need to quit, stop waging war against God because it is a losing battle. He will win.